Welcome back to the Student Hub Live Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences Showcase. We're now going to be talking about A111, Discovering the Arts and Humanities. And I'm joined by Richard Jones, Jessica Hughes and Carolyn Price. Now Richard is a lecturer in English Literature and is the module chair for A111. Um, Jessica Hughes is a senior lecturer in Classical Studies um, and you're on the module team as well. And Carolyn, you're a senior lecturer in Philosophy, also a member of the module team. So, tell us what the module's about, Richard. Well, the module is it's an introduction to studying the arts and humanities. So that means if you're interested in studying art history, classical studies, creative writing, English literature or language, history, music, philosophy or religious studies. So if you're interested in exploring any of those subject pathways or qualifications, then this is your starting point. Brilliant. Well, Mark is starting in October. Anna is so excited. Um, and William is starting then too as well. So, so who's it aimed at? Well, all of those, all those students, but also students who are new to uh, higher education or haven't studied very much previously because it takes you through the skills for each of those subject areas step by step and gradually and also introduces uh, broad study skills as well, such as sort of planning your time or mar uh, sort of planning an essay or writing an essay and, uh, yeah, general... general uh, it gives you time to think about you know, what you're doing and studying the module and what your longer term aims yeah. are. And of course, yeah. being new to higher education, you'd cover lots of key skills and of mm -hmm. course, a whole range of content, it's very interdisciplinary. Yeah. By the way, we've got a widget or an interactive multiple choice question I'd like you to fill in at home. This is a lot easier than our last session, you'll be pleased to know, <laughs> um, where we had a lot of philosophical questions that we were really grappling with. So this one's easy. What first springs to mind when you think of Charles Dickens? And we've got uh, options of Christmas, long novels, exuberant characters, a man with a beard, or something else. So let us know which applies to you. Just open that widget, click on the item that's there, and then you can see what everyone else says at home. We'll tell you the results of those when they're ready as well. OK, so we've covered the module, and we've sort of talked a little bit about the sort of some of the skills and things. But, but Jess, what is it actually about? What's some of the key content that, that's included? OK, well, it's obviously about the arts and humanities, and you'll meet um, content from all of the subject areas that Richard's just mentioned. But the module is divided into three blocks or units. There's three books, and then they're each accompanied by a significant amount of online content, and they're thematic. So the first one is reputations, and this ties into your question just now about Charles Dickens, because he's one of the figures that we look at there. The second book or block is on traditions, and the third one is on crossing boundaries. So those are three themes that you'll work through as you're studying the module in order. And in each of those blocks you'll meet examples case studies from all of the arts and humanities disciplines that we teach here so it's a very varied it's very full it's very exciting and by the time you get to the end of the module you've encountered a, a huge chronological and geographical range of content so there's there's lots to get your teeth into so that's the what you study and what about how we study it well uh, students will have books um, and uh, there, are, there are chapters in the books, but surrounding the, the work in the books, there's um, material on the VLE, and there's a huge wealth of different kinds of uh, things students will be able to use. There are videos, there are audios, um, there's a lot of interactive uh, materials. Um, so you'll have a very varied study week. Perfect. Um, that sounds really exciting. It's always nice to have an addition to, to reading things. It's always lovely to see videos and, and other various animations as well. OK, so the first theme then is reputations. And we asked people at home what they thought about Charles Dickens. So would you like to see what everyone said? Oh, yes, OK, right. Let's see the results of that poll. What first springs to mind when you think of Charles Dickens, 46% said something else. Okay. Uh, but 23% <laughs> said Christmas, 23% said exuberant characters. I'd love to know what those something else's are. I bet they're in the chat and I bet you that following our discussion about ethics, religion and philosophy, there have been lots of other things that have come to mind. So we'll take a trip to the hot desk in a second. What's the idea then with reputations, Richard? Mm. Well, in reputation, we ask that sort of question to start with because it's partly about thinking about your, your own assumptions and expectations that you might bring to study. So a question like that, there's no right or wrong answer, but it's interesting to think about your own starting places, how these reputations might have developed. So if you thought of Dickens, say, as someone who wrote long novels, then you might be interested to explore and find out that actually a lot of his writing was in instalments in magazines published weekly. 
yeah. example. Or if you thought of him as a, a man with a beard, <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you have an idea of, I don't know, a Victorian sort of maybe fusty, moralistic, teacherly sort of figure. And then you'd be surprised to find out that Dickens was actually highly experimental and playful and went around the country acting out the parts that he created. So it's partly challenging those expectations, but working with them and thinking about how, they, how these figures have sort of reached us today. So in the theme, more generally, we are, we are asking those kind of questions. Why are some people remembered and some forgotten? You know, why does a certain, rep how does a reputation form and how does it change over time? And you've got a copy of the book and, and each of these covers of the book yeah. have, a, have a really key picture that I know you spent a lot of time considering yes. <laughs> to represent the theme. Wow. So, so talk us through why you chose this image. Well, this is the first book, yeah, Reputations. Reputations. Yeah. And, well, we have Elizabeth I on the cover yeah. here. So, I mean, one question we might want to ask about that is, you know, how far was she in control of this image? Is this the image that she wanted to present to people? Or is this somebody else's view of her? And how has that informed our understanding of her? So it's, a, it's a, a, a starting point to thinking about her life and who she was. Yeah. But, but I can talk, talk you rapidly through some of the other yeah. uh, areas. So we asked that sort of question with Elizabeth the first, but we also look at Cleopatra, ask similar kind of questions, think about her image today in film or on TV, but think about that in relation to Roman sources and Arabic sources. Yeah, compared to our Queen, who, you know, with the internet and paparazzi yeah. and things, would have very little yeah. control over her reputation. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the sort of thing we were looking at. So uh, then we move on from that to look at uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and asking similar questions, looking at Christian writings and Islamic writings in relation to people today and how they engage with her today. And we move through that to Elizabeth I and then on to look at Mozart and thinking about ideas about genius and his reputation for being maybe a child prodigy, but also interested in listening to his music and how to listen closely. We then move to another figure, Mary Wollstonecraft, who's perhaps lesser known, but she's a philosopher and we're looking at her writings, the vindication of the rights of woman, and we want to think about how we can unpick an argument from within her writings. Then we move from there to Charles Dickens, which we've mentioned, and then finally to Van Gogh. Uh, and with Van Gogh, who's, uh, I don't know, many of his paintings are quite well known and famous and go for a lot of money, but does that uh, reputation sort of get in the way of, what, of understanding what he was trying to do in his own art? So we're sort of exploring that notion of celebrity as well, how it might uh, mislead us or obscure so past. you're using the idea of reputation in very, very different ways to look at the various different case studies that you've selected. Yes, that's exactly it. So we go right into those, into those topics and those materials and using them partly to explore those figures and partly to think about how we go about studying the past. What, what sources can we use or evidence? How can we build that up? What does mm. that tell us? So we're exploring skills in those individual subject areas mm. and how they relate to the other subject areas mm. and how they differ from them. Mm. Mm. Which is really nice because so often, you know, students love getting to grips with some of that content and particular things mm. that you do or don't know things about that challenge your own expectations, but mm. also that aren't divided into now let's do a bit of philosophy or classical studies and those preconceptions there because, as you say, these are so integrated, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Would you like to tell us about book two? Yeah, sure. So book two is about traditions. I have to admit, this isn't the actual book two because book two is still in you press. So, there, yeah. there, Jess, yes, so we've just done, done a mock-up of this. We, I hope you like the cover. It's, um, it's called Hipster in Stone and it's by a contemporary <laughs> artist called Leo Kayard who um, we study in the module as well. So traditions is a really exciting and important theme in the study of the arts and humanities because it is all about how the past reaches us and what we do with that past and um, how we interact with it, how we make it continually relevant for the present day. Um, one of the other reasons that we picked this picture is because it leads so nicely into the first unit of the book, which is all about classical sculpture. 
um, and we in that unit we look at well we look at ancient Greece and ancient Rome and sculptures in their original context but then we kind of zoom through the Renaissance and come to contemporary artists like Leo Kayard um, and one of the highlights of that unit for me is when we go we take virtual visits into artist studios and we went to visit three different artists and we look at them at work we look at the techniques that they're using and we talk to them about why is it that the classical tradition is still so important for them and how it impacts on them and I actually I, I chose a section of a video clip from one of those artists videos and we went to see Alexander Stoddard up in Paisley in Scotland in his studio and he was telling us about how he regards his relationship with Phidias and other 5th century BC Athenian sculptors and people who um, are very famous but not necessarily well known today but very important for him. Okay, so let's take a look at this, this video then, that's uh, an extract from the video even. I wouldn't say I have a constant daily prayer to Phidias. These people are so much with me. They're my contemporaries, the people I've worked with all my life. You know, death is no divi divider. So one doesn't you know, go through a list of the greats every morning, so to speak. They are just constantly there applying their lesson and their censure to you. Gosh, so glass is a big thing there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in addition, I mean, you mentioned that that was the first unit of this, this uh, Absolutely. block. Well, what yeah. else is included? Um, so after looking at classical sculpture, we moved to look at music and the um, example chosen there is, is blues and blues singing. And so we, we, um, we focus quite a lot on listening skills in that unit, but also on the historical aspects of the blues and how that developed and the particular social circumstances of the, the early period of blues. And you'll um, listen to people like B.B. King and Muddy Waters and even the Beatles, I think, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, and then we look at traditions of storytelling and that's a creative writing unit. And um, if you'll get chance to join in that tradition as well by practicing some of your own writing and that involves a creative writing forum as well where you get to exchange ideas with tutors and other students so that, that's really great part of the block um, and then moving on to English literature and looking at um, traditions of animal poetry and you work with an anthology um, about uh, it's called the favor book of beasts um, and again that's practicing skills of textual criticism and thinking about the process of compiling an an anthology as well you know what becomes and remains canonical because of the choices that we make as editors and as scholars and as readers um, and then it's philosophy the turn of philosophy so we zoom back to ancient Greece and um, <laughs> to Plato and we look at a Socratic dialogue the Lakeys and think about um, courage as a big theme in that unit isn't it um, and also the relationship between tradition and moral belief so that's a slightly different angle on tradition to the earlier parts of the block um, then back into the more recent age um, for a historical case study about Ireland, about late 19th and early 20th century Ireland. And there we've, we're also addressing this big question of how nations remember and how they forget certain things as well. So another very important part of tradition is cultural memory. So that's a big part of that unit. Um, and then um, moving on to religious studies and um, the last two chapters, the religious studies and the art history units are about buildings and so developing skills of analysing architecture and buildings. And in the religious studies, we're looking at um, English and Scottish Christianity and particularly um, Canterbury Cathedral. That's one of the main sites that we go to and there's some wonderful videos that, um, from Canterbury and Dunfermline Abbey as well that we, um, that we filmed up in Scotland. Um, and also then, so art history is the final uh, unit in the book and then we're looking at um, the Gothic tradition and the classical tradition and how those two um, interacted and main case studies there are um, the Houses of Parliament and Castle Cook in Wales. So travelling all around um, and hopefully picking up lots of important skills in musical and visual analysis and um, literary criticism and philo philosophical arguments. So it's all about, you know, again, what we study, but how we study it. It's very skills focused. Gosh, well, Mark, Anna and William, you've got a lot to look forward to and an awful lot to do. And that is only the first two blocks. Carolyn, you um, are going to tell us about block three. OK, yes. Yeah, so let me pick this up. This Crossing is boundaries. This is another mock-up uh, because it, we haven't quite gone to, to print yet. Um, Why have you chosen this image for the, for the book? Ah, well, 
Uh, the book is about crossing boundaries, uh, and it's about crossing boundaries in, in a number of ways, but I'm just going to talk about two. So the two most important ways are, uh, first of all, it, it's about crossing cultural boundaries. So it's um, about how art objects, works of um, drama and music, or uh, religious practices, philosophical ideas, um, have, have kind of crossed from one culture to another how they've been understood by a different culture and in some cases how they've been misunderstood um, and how cultures change each other when they, when they meet. Um, and the second sense in which it's about crossing boundaries is that it's also about crossing uh, boundaries between different subject areas in arts and humanities. So we've said already that in fact the different subject areas work together. Well in book three we're really going to get into that in a, in a deep way because um, the units are kind of grouped uh, and so different people from different subject areas w were working together to write units that complemented each other and in some cases actually very closely integrated to show how um, arts and humanities scholars work together to answer complex questions. And the reason we chose this image is for the last two units in the book um, are by religious studies and philosophy who are writing about Buddhism. I mentioned this in the previous session. Um, and this is Chen Rizeg, um, who's a figure in Buddhism um, who uh, represents compassion. And one of the very important uh, concepts we'll be exploring in those two units is, is compassion. So we'll be understanding uh, Buddhist beliefs and practices around compassion, why compassion is important in Buddhism, but also looking at the philosophy of compassion and how Western philosophers and Buddhist philosophers have understood it and whether, asking whether Western philosophers could have something useful to learn from, from Buddhist thought. Brilliant. And there's plenty more in there as well. You've got Antigone, you've got protest music, and, and many sorts of, of the other disciplines also included. Yes, so we start with uh, three units um, looking at the ancient Greek play Antigone, how that was taken up um, by uh, a playwright and actors in 1970s South Africa, uh, where it became used as a, a vehicle of protest. Um, and then we also move on from that to looking at South African music and how that became a vehicle of protest against apartheid in the 1970s. Um, so that's in a way looking at kind of how um, cultural objects, plays and music um, can, can really have cultural, uh, sorry, uh, social and political significance. Um, and, and how they have that power, where that power comes from. And then in the middle, um, we have uh, two units on the African kingdom of Benin uh, and the very beautiful sculptures that, sculptures that were produced in that kingdom. And we tell the story of how they came to be in European museums, not a very happy story. Um, and we talk about how those objects were understood uh, by, the Europe by Europeans and, as I said earlier, in some cases misunderstood. Um, and we then get into um, the modern debate right at the end about whether those items should be repatriated now and look at some different views on that. Gosh, well, it's absolutely packed full of content. And I know there's a lot of love for this. So let me take a quick trip to H.J. and Damon. Yeah, there's lots of people raring to go with this module. I'm really excited to start. Um, I know uh, Anna said she's been preparing a presentation for the OU Journal Club on Cleopatra because of starting this module in October. And she says it's really interesting. And um, Caroline and Isabel have been having a great conversation um, about representation. We touched on that earlier. She said it's similar to what we do uh, today in our uh, selfies, self-representation, showing our best-sided and filtered to the point where we don't even look like ourselves. So something very highly curated. And uh, Isabel said as well, the Facebook and Instagram view is uh, usually very far from reality, even without filters as well. So I think great points on that and just shows how it links really well to what we're doing today as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, um, the whole aspect of how people portray themselves and then how people further down history portray them doesn't necessarily marry up together. Um, and I think Mark was asking how what kind of thing he can do to prepare before he starts. So he's, he's asking what kind of things that he can he can be looking at. So we, we sent him the link to the Antigone video, which was published on Friday, um, and the Travelling Arts Objects um, blog as well. So there, there's stuff there that people can start looking at before they start. Brilliant. 
Brilliant. Well, thank you for that. And Mark, if you missed uh, this morning's session, we were talking about preparing for study, and that will be available on the catch up very soon. Um, and we were talking about the importance of qualification websites and forums and things to really prepare for study. So we won't have time to go into that now because unfortunately we are out of time. So Richard Jones, Jess Hughes, and, and Carolyn Price, thank you so much for giving us a wonderful flavour of all that is to come <laughs> in A111. I know everyone's really looking forward to it. We've got some videos to play you, um, as we just mentioned. So as Damon said, we've got the Antigone video and then uh, a Who's Who with our very own Jessica Hughes. And then we'll be back for our next section, which is A233, Telling Stories, the novel and beyond. I'll see you in a few minutes.